Good afternoon to everyone. We will start hearing number 15 of the 179th period of sessions. That once again, it's virtual. I welcome all the persons that are going to participate in this hearing. On behalf of the name of the hearing is Human Rights Situation of the Afro-Descendant, Peasant and Indigenous Communities of Bajo Atrato, Colombia. This hearing was requested by the Commission Intereclesial de Justicia y Paz from Colombia. In today's session, we have the representation of the civil society. We welcome and thank you for your presence today and all the information you're going to provide. Also, we welcome the representatives of the state and we thank all the information they may provide in this hearing. Before telling you about the organization of the hearing, I want to highlight that I am accompanied by, by the first Vice President Julissa Martinia, former President and Rapporteur of the Human Rights Defenders. And Margaret McCauley will join us soon. Also, the Executive Secretary Maria Claudia Pulido and the Special Rapporteur on Social, Economic, Cultural, and Mental Rights, Soledad Garcia. Also, all the staff of the Executive Secretariat that carries out the follow up of the different topics of the rapporteurship. Thank you, the presence of everyone of the staff behind the screen working on this uh, hearing. Please keep your cameras on your microphones off while you're not speaking. We have simultaneous interpretation and also subtitles for those of you who need to use them. You will be able to see that at the bottom of the screen. You will see the icons. I don't know how they're called, but you have to choose the subtitles that are um, real-time subtitles. For this hearing, the civil society will have 20 minutes there is a timer where you will want to see the time. Please respect that. I will try. I always say try because I don't want to interrupt you, but I will let you know when your time is, uh, when you're running out of time. Also, the state will have 20 minutes. Please respect that time. Afterwards, the commission will have a space for comments and questions. Then turn our remarks by civil society is 12 minutes and remarks by the state 12 minutes as well. While you speak, please introduce yourselves. Without further ado, I will now give the floor to the representatives from the civil society. Good afternoon, Madam President. I am David Romera. I want to greet you all and the representatives of the state as well from the government of Colombia. Here, I will give the floor to five delegates from the communities, indigenous communities of Bajo Atrato and to human rights defenders. When they take the floor, they will introduce themselves. Leaders are, have fear of giving their names due to the delicate situation that they are living in the territories. Good afternoon. Today, Seventy. That's a problem with the audio. It's not possible to listen. You're uh, you are muted.
afternoon. We have a technical problem. We are going to make a brief presentation while we adjust technical difficulties. In this hearing, we are going to refer to what is occurring since November 2016 up to today. After the uh, peace agreement was signed with the FARC, uh, a strategy to control the territory was developed and our armed structures in the uh, indigenous populations and Afro descendants peoples, communities of the region. So indigenous peoples have been subjected to constant operations in their territories with serious and systematic violations to their human rights. Since the beginning of these operations, they were publicly reported and two meetings were carried out with the General Commission of Guarantees that Juan Manuel Sanders was in charge of that time. In spite of those meetings, no strategic actions were developed. Those who are part of these armed forces are part of the AUC that gave uh, that provided the creation of a transitional judicial system afterwards with the signature before the signature of the agreement, peace agreement. They, these organizations included uh, guerrilla members from the FARC after the signature of the agreement with the Colombian state, members of the FARC are part of these armed forces. In this period, 67 incidents occurred affecting groups of families to community displacements as well. Regarding sexual violence, we have documented more than 12 uh, rape. And we want to highlight that children are being uh, involved in the armed forces as well. Many murders have been committed, 47 complaints regarding damages and the cooperation for deforestation of the national park and collective territories have been presented as well and they are ordered by this army. We insist, in spite of the permanent meetings with the national government, this situation uh, keeps on occurring amidst the presence of public forces. We understand that public forces, permanent units, on a military that are present in the region. Amidst the pandemic, it was impossible to access to Catholic pastors and human rights defenders, they were forbidden access to these territories as they are controlled by the armed forces. The communities have the presence of one or two persons that belong to this army. They are dressed as civilians. They have uh, weapons. They are subjected to their orders. They define what to plant how to deforestate and they even develop strategies to repopulate the territories so that other communities of the uh, country can participate in these extractivist activities. This has been documented, it has been detailed and many Official, um, officials have stated that communities have to eliminate those um, complaints. The members of these armed forces that are part of the territory since 2016 have shown that they have the, they count on the support of the military forces. The health services, education services, and all COVID measures have been dealt by 
these uh, armed forces without the presence of the state in spite of the presence of the um, um, the office of the prosecutor general that received the complaints, no measure was adopted. We can affirm, unfortunately affirm, that there is a state within the state. We will now give the floor to the victims. One of them has been threatened in several locations. He appears in several lists and because of the complaints that he has presented before all these arbitrary and illegal operations that have taken place in the territory. Good afternoon. Today, the indigenous guards that are, are following the paramilitary that are present in the region, they have gone over the Chocolatal group. This occurs since 2016. In 2019, we, the communities, have twice have done two containments. First, in March 2019, we had, we lacked the presence of the army for two weeks. The second one occurred in 2020 where there was uh, institutional presence. The lack of presence of the state, we were able to contain the paramilitary. We have also faced, faced uh, blockades and they control the entry and exit of persons from other regions. But deforestations continue as there is uh, the control and presence of the AJC the neighbors of the indigenous communities are being displaced and confined. We have carried out the organization of the territory amidst the COVID-19. We have eradicated many hectares. That's why we leaders are threatened. There is also illegal mining The communities feel fear right now due to the risk of displacement, due to the uh, presence on the estate. I will now give the floor to one female leader. Good afternoon. Everybody, I'm talking from the basin of the river Cacarica, and we demand to be heard. Women in Colombia have some privilege, and one of that is the rights of women. And as of now, our rights are being violated, especially in the collective territories of our communities. That violence also affects our children. Our children are suffering. Uh, because of the illegal groups. And they have uh, subjected our children and they are forcing them to uh, carry out sex work or to prostitute themselves. Uh, it's very difficult for us as mothers to see uh, our children undergo, undergo this reality. Please help us. Thank you very much.
another female leader will talk now. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to a second my partner, my comrade. I am here with my heart in my hands. We hope that the God of life help us because we don't have help from the government of Colombia. I'm a female leader. I have been a victim of sexual abuse or sexual harassment. And my partners, my colleagues have experienced worse situations. We don't want our children to suffer because they have the right to live uh, better lives. We don't want to say so many things because if you tell them that person becomes, uh, has a value or has a price. So we want uh, these experiences that we are sharing, that are, these are for you. You can do something because the government is not helping us. And why are, aren't they helping us? Because if the government pay attention to us or had paid attention to us from the very beginning, these things wouldn't have happened in our territories. We are facing a new displacement. We don't want that to be repeated, to happen again. We as Colombians, in spite of the, in spite of the fact, we are living in a different Colombia from that, uh, that the high classes are living. We as civilians have to face a very complex situation. We have to demand for uh, the respect of our lives and our territories. We hope that you can do something for the civilians because the government of Colombia has done nothing. I would like to give the floor to the leaders of the communities of the Bajo Atrato region. Thank you and good afternoon. I am afraid of my life. But if it's not for us, nobody will do this. So we are risking our lives, but we need to tell what we are going through. If the current president would have listened to our petitions, this wouldn't have happened. We sent him a letter asking him to authorize us to have a community plan so that we as community have a better right to survive in our territories. Since 2002, we have been uh, holding several festivals. We call them festivals or parties of memory. Uh, different organizations, uh, international national organizations have been able to participate at these festivals or parties. Since 2016, after the peace agreement between the FARC and the national government, we have a new entity, the HEC. We have seen this as victims, but we accept this. We believe that through the agreements of the peace agreement or those commissions created under the peace agreement will help us to understand that others would understand the reality of our country because many of those who caused harm and murder and death in our territories are still free. 
Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to continue what my colleague, my comrade was saying, is that we believe in the autonomy of our territories. It seems that the signature of the, of the signing of the peace agreements did not bring peace. It increased the conflicts. The lack of trust on us, the intimidating actions of the agencies in the different communities make uh, also make all of us feel afraid. Extensive farming of coca, in, even in national parks. The situation of leaders. We are not free to decide and we cannot report what is happening in our territories. We have to remain silent. In the peace agreement, uh, there was a possibility of listening to the victims of the actions in Bajo Atrato region, but we have not been heard. And that is because there is a lack of truth and without truth, there is no justice. And we have a problem. There is a lack of social development that is not promoted by the state. And what happens is that people need to pay to go to the doctor. We have to sell our dignity in order to save our families. Oh, we cannot accept that, but this is happening in our territories. We don't have time to explain what is happening in our territories. There are many things are not being said because of time constraints. I would like to talk with you, but it's impossible. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor to Elena Jetes, that is the lawyer, and she will be presenting the conclusions. Good afternoon. According to the facts explained by the different delegates that talked before me, we requested that within 10 days, there is an in, in, a comprehensive protection plan that is announced. It should also establish the institutional responsibilities at a local and regional level and a national level with deadlines and sources of funding that include human rights policies, peace policies, environmental policies, social development policies that enable the full engagement of, engagement of fundamental rights and economic, social, cultural rights. And the plan should include uh, the oversight of the standards at international level. Uh, we also request humanitarian aid during the pandemic. Also the implementation of vaccination programs for our communities. Also, we need a comprehensive approach and the oversight of the health system. We would like for the local visit, to, uh, in the local visit, we would like to cut the visit of the uh, rapporteur for economic, social and cultural rights. And also for the rapporteur that is in charge for uh, memory, truth, and justice. Uh, to conclude, we want that in the re next report of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, there is a chapter with an ethnic approach that includes Afro-descendants, indigenous communities, especially of the Bajo Atrato region. Thank you. Are you, have you finished? Have you finished your presentation? Yes. Yes, Madam President. Yes, because uh, I will give now the floor to the state and they will have 21 minutes and 30 seconds in order to compensate. Good afternoon, Madam President. Can you hear me? Yes, Ambassador, we can hear you. Good morning, uh, commissioners, delegates, of the petition organization, 
that is the Commission Intersticial de Justicia y Paz, and all those who are following uh, the hearing. First, I would like to say that the matters regarding human rights are being addressed by the state of Colombia. And we have solid institutions for that. Those institutions have existed for many decades and we are implementing measures and public policies aimed at protecting human rights of all the citizens in the country. Especially uh, for today's uh, topic, I would like to say that the state of Colombia presented in the 174 and 175 period of sessions, the different progress made regarding the precautionary measures presented for the communities in the Abajo Atrato region. The state of Colombia complies with its commitment to apply the, or to comply with the precautionary measures that favor the beneficiaries. The today we will talk about this region in particular, uh, in particular, and I would like to talk about the things presented by the petition organization, the different agencies of the state have prepared their presentations, and Colombia will respect the schedule or the agenda for today's hearing. Uh, in order, I in the presentation of the states. There will be two entities that will be participating, the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of National Defense. The Minister of the Interior will be uh, represented by Mauricio Hernandez, that is the Secretary of Human Rights. He will present the measures taken in the region of the Bajo Atrato in order to guarantee and to protect the fundamental rights of the population at that territory. Uh, the Ministry of the, Nas the National Defense, uh, led by Cornelio Arango, will be presented the actions implemented by public forces in order to preserve the lives of the people from the communities uh, against armed uh, groups. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, commissioners of the Honorable Commission of Human Rights. Our representatives of the victims and delegates of the government, I would like to greet you all. My name is Mauricio Hernandez Ivanez. I'm the Director of Human Rights of the Ministry of the Interior. Taking into consideration the situation of human rights of the communities of the Bajo Atrato region, the Ministry of the Interior have done the following actions. In September of 2020, uh, as part of the uh, School of Training of Social Leaders that was carried out together with the National University of Colombia, we had a training session regarding protection that was aimed at female leaders and female human rights defenders in the Department of Chocó. In December of 2020, uh, there was the signing of the citizen uh, agreement in order to protect human rights. These agreements include a dialogue between the different social areas of the department. And we are trying to establish actions to protect leaders from stigmatization. And they seek to create environment for their work. The agreement for the Department of Chocó was coordinated by the Peace Council of the region that also deals with any human rights situation in that area. The agreement included the participation of leaders, the Catholic uh, Church, and also we have leaders from the Bajo Atrato region. Within the framework of these measures, the project for the territory transformation in order to guarantee human rights, subscribe with the multi-donor fund for peace. We have presented several actions to protect and to preserve the lives of leaders and human rights defendants and their organizations for the department of Chocó, including also the Sucio River and other areas within the Bajo Atrato region. I would like also to say 
that we had taken actions as part of the decree 3187 of 2018. As part of this strategy, we have developed a session in the territory on May the 23rd of 2020. The session was carried out with the minister, by the Minister of the Interior together with the Citizen Security Office together with the Office for uh, Afro-Descent Matters and Indigenous Matters. And also we had the participation of other ministries. We uh, different ethnic groups and ethnic and territory organizations and leaders participated in the session. This included representatives of indigenous peoples, etc. Also, we have the participation of the Minister of the Interior, also the Office for the Peace, also the Department of Chocó. We have delegates, the National Army of Colombia, the Ministry of Justice, the Public Prosecutor Office, international organizations, the Unit for the Protection of Victims, and also the National Unit, Unit of Protection. Uh, in this session, we assign the following commitments to manage the resources to build a citizen integration center, meetings with different members of the community to address uh, three things, the self-government, the strengthening of the civilian guard, and also the creation of a health group for the communities of the Abajo Trato region. Also, uh, development of an agreement for that area. Third, the holding of a meeting to develop a roadmap for collective protection. We decided to carry out these meetings uh, together uh, with, the, with the leaders and with, uh, in June, we have also the community councils of Rio Sucia. After that, the Minister of the Interior uh, made a proposal with 12 items in order to give the actions or to the, um, refer the actions to the different agencies of the state. We'll be participating now in five meetings and those meetings will be held in the different sub-regions of the Department of Chocó. I would also like to mention the uh, proceedings carried out with the department of uh, that area. We also promoted the resolution of February 2019. We created an institutional committee. Also, we prepared the roadmap to establish the process to strengthen the role of the community members of Mencisha. And we also presented the constitutional proposal of the Ministry of the Interior. And we have also different areas of this ministry that participated during those sessions. We have also in 2019 local uh, community strengthening sessions. We also have another um, meetings for the strengthening of the community after the issuance of the precautionary measure. And in two, September 2019, we have also a session for the strengthening of leaders. Uh, in 2009, we also included the actions of each of the community councils, Teresita, Equiparador, Pedeguita, Mancilla, Isaraki. Finally, as part of the compliance of the right judgment of 2016, in 2019, we have thematic tables in order to prepare the plan of actions to recover the uses and traditions of Black communities that live in the Atrato River Basin. In between 2019 and 2020, we had several sessions we, that included 70 leaders from the municipality, taking into consideration the situation of human rights of the ethnic communities in the Bajo Atrato region. We would like to mention the following measures that we are taking. The strengthening of 
uh, the situation of human rights and especially the public policy of human rights and the private consultation mechanism. We also develop an agreement to have an emergency plan to develop immediate actions for the violations of human rights of these communities. We also prepare a decree for the protection of these communities. Now we have 20 items that have been discussed and we have a budget of $400,000 to establish or to implement these measures. We also have a system of early alerts and we also train the public forces in the area of human rights. And finally, on March the 5th and 4th, uh, we worked in a training session with the Department of Chocó in order to advance on a roadmap to protect the indigenous communities of the Department of Chocó. We decided to implement collective measures of urgent protection for those communities that are most affected. And now I would like to give the floor to Kennel Arango, that is the Director of Human Rights of the Ministry of National Defense. Thank you, Dr. Mauricio. First of all, I want to greet all the leaders that are participating in this first uh, part of the hearing and all the members of the petitioner uh, group all the representatives of the states as it has been mentioned by dr mauricio the colombian government informs the commission about this hearing that there's a institutional uh, development since the point of view uh, in order to provide security to this region of the world. First of all, Madam Commissioner, the Ministry of Defense of the Government of Colombia has defense and security measures that are part of a civilian protection uh, policy that has been well developed and several goals to interrupt the uh, chain of value of illicit activities, disarticulate criminal organizations, captures the uh, responsible for human rights violations, in particular, uh, those who have uh, violated the rights of human rights defenders and leaders. It has an approach regarding the protection of the environment as a factor uh, of importance for the nation. The uh, basin of the Atrato River is being affected by the illicit participation of armed uh, groups. There's a strategy in several parts of the country for the protection of the environment. Going back to these uh, crimes that are being mentioned, taking into account the Office of the Prosecution uh, we work closely with the Attorney General to achieve the best results possible. This has allowed us to capture the dangerous criminals in the region from the different uh, armed groups. It is evident that in this region, due to its strategic location and other factors, these, uh, have, we have Clan of Golfo organized uh, groups that are present there many criminals that have affected the integrity and the life of our leaders two years ago. Um, Medjeje was murdered and after uh, a strong action, it was able to dismantle the whole um, organization and capture all the persons responsible for that murder of Professor Medjeje. Following this line, Madam Commissioner, I would like to say that within the doctrine of protection of the life, uh, apart from the policy that has been mentioned, the results and the different guidelines that have been developed to train our men and women that combat crime to regarding crimes committed against indigenous peoples, we take care of Afro-descendants uh, communities as well, and to take care of rural 
uh, communities, we have this guideline um, 017 since 2015. So we have guidelines that are being developed and implemented. We have training and also this is uh, implemented in uh, police and army operations to protect these communities. I also want to say that policies to defense the security are part of police and army uh, plans and those plans for each region um, include uh, meetings with the heads with the head of state with the different um, members of the military and several operations have been carried out in the region of Choco. These operations are coordinated with the military and just mentioned uh, a few, the Simon Bolivar operation is a specific operation to fight um, the structure of illicit organizations. The Frondon operation, also operation for the control of the border and different operations we are working really hard to combat the crime factors in this region of the country. Finally, before giving the floor to the chief of operations, I would like to mention some aspects of this hearing. It has to do with the early alerts issued by the ambassadors. persons. We have multiple um, early alerts the Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of the Interior are committed to be um, part in the implementation. The national government to the Ministry of Defense has um, stated that the military should be responsible for the application of this um, before the ambas person's office. Madam President, I want to finish my participation and I want to restate that there are many results that we have to say that we do not accept that there is a state within the state because we are carrying out great efforts. And we also reject the fact that there are no actions to protect these communities because after the uh, participation of the Ministry of Defense, it is clear that the state is present in this region. I will now give the floor to my colleague now to explain and uh, provide further details. Cornell. Okay, I wanted Cornell Ronda to explain to explain. I think to explain the uh, operations of police forces in order to explain these statements and the initiatives uh, in order to fight armed forces. And also want to say, Madam Commissioner, and that when the policy of the government is of zero tolerance against any illegal activity. And if there's a person that is using its power to favor criminals or commit illicit activities, this government provides uh, all the necessary uh, efforts in order to take that person from its position in order to achieve justice and punish those persons. For the public force and the government, the most important thing is the legitimacy of the institutions. We are uh, 1,200, 200 year old institutions and we do not want uh, the actions of one person to stain our good uh, name. I will now give the floor to the next person. I think that the colonel is muted. Maybe you can allow him to speak. Thank you. Could you unmute the colonel, please?
Is he present? Yes, but he's muted. I don't know if he, maybe he's not able to unmute himself. Maybe it's a technical problem or maybe he has a technical problem on his side. If you agree, we can continue um, as the state has some more minutes. Maybe in the final comments, the colonel can make his presentation. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay, so I understand that the representatives of the state. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Misa Neko. I would like to use the time, the remaining time, so that the colonel can participate in this opportunity. I do not have any problem. We have a minute and a half. The problem is technical, technical one. So we are trying to solve this technical issue for the hearing to continue. If we can solve it now, that's perfect. I don't know if we can solve it. Yes, the microphone is off. Madam Ambassador, I'm talking about Colonel Rodham from the Special Task Force that wanted to contribute. The Executive Secretariat, I'm asking them, is uh, this a problem on our side? I think it's not. I think it's a problem he has to access the audio, but it's not a problem of the platform. So I propose, if you agree, as you have a minute and a half afterwards, uh, when the state makes the final remarks, then he can take the floor. Otherwise, the agenda gets delayed for the following hearings. So while you solve this technical problem, the staff is telling me that the platform has no particular problem. Maybe he can restart his device to solve the problem. And afterwards, in the remaining 12 minutes the state has, he can have his minute and a half. Okay, Commissioner. Okay. So I will make the we will make the comments. I mean the commission will make its comments. First of all, as rapporteur of Colombia and Indigenous Peoples, I would like first of all to express the persons that provided their testimonies. Undoubtedly, it's of great concern, this situation. It is a terrible situation. What you have mentioned about the presence of paramilitary groups in the area, the Commission has been monitoring this constantly in the last years. We have issued several press releases about this, and we have carried out several uh, work meetings, as the ambassador mentioned, regarding several precautionary measures and some petitioners are present in this hearing. However, in spite of this monitoring, we listen to the testimonies from the persons and the testimony especially regarding the situation of children and adolescents, sexual violence, and realizing the fear that when you are suffering, I wanted to tell especially one of the female leaders that you don't have to apologize for your testimony. We have to thank you for your courage for providing your testimonies. We are aware of the daily danger you are going through and want to express my solidarity and tell you that we are accompanying you. I just wanted to express our solidarity. These have been uh, testimonies that have evidenced the daily fear that you suffer. I want to make some questions. First of all, 
some of you mentioned that this situation had led to new displacement. Could you provide more information about that? This is an issue we are following up, internal um, displacement due to the violence in certain territories. Maybe you can provide more information about that. Also, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned, the petitioners mentioned, you asked for a comprehensive uh, intervention plan, but I want to ask you after listening to the state, what specific actions do you expect from the state in this context of the uh, presence of the AGC, all the threats and harassments that you are suffering? It could be very important for the Commission to understand the context we understand, but we need to know what specific actions would help this situation that's affecting you apart from that comprehensive plan. But it would be important to listen to you in that sense. You have also mentioned the access to the JEP, uh, to the GEP, if you could clarify that. And I wanted to know that we have follow up from the relationship on memory, truth and justice, um, providing a space of to listen victims of armed conflicts. And in the case of Afro-descendants, uh, peasants and in indigenous peoples, have you been able to access the spaces provided by this rapporteurship? Maybe you feel unheard, not only by the state, the executive branch, but also by the judicial branch, the HEP. And I would like to know about that. And finally, before the terrible situation, I take into account the solution um, that you mentioned in connection with social, economic, cultural, environmental rights and everything all the communities have been working on and the threats you are suffering from illegal and paramilitary groups. What public policies exist for this specific situation of the economic, social, cultural, environmental rights with an ethnic approach taking into account these are indigenous, peasant, and Afro descendant communities. And these um, policies, policies for the development uh, are being developed in this region. Are there specific programs developed by the state in this regard? And also regarding the request of the petitioners. About a comprehensive intervention plan, I wanted to know from the state about the other programs that are being developed regarding these rights. I will now give the floor to the first Vice President, Commissioner Julissa Mantisha. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to start my uh, intervention by greeting the representatives of the state and also the representatives of the civil society organizations. I am the rapporteur uh, of persons in human mobility. I'm older persons. And I would like to have information regarding internal displacements that are taking place in the region. And in addition, I would like to know about the responses of the state, if they have a differentiated approach for Afro uh, descendants. I would like to know if there is a specific response for older persons, because older persons have a very important role in these communities. I would like to know if you have a differentiated approach for this group of people. Uh, the state has uh talked about the training sessions that they are providing i would like to know if those training sessions included a specific programs for the armed forces and for the state with a gender approach and what do you uh, if there are were training sessions regarding sexual violence i would like to know if there are also oversight uh programs and if the training sessions have been successful and have been uh, effective I also would like to uh, have more information about the roadmap that you were mentioning. And I would like to know if you had a differentiated approach. 
I imagine that Commissioner May Macaulay will have more specific questions, but regarding human mobility, I know that there is a report of the Constitutional Court of Colombia that said that violence and sexual violence are causes of displacement in Colombia. So I would like to know if that dimension of sexual violence related to displacement with an approach uh, or a specific emphasis on the Afro population has been taken into consideration, especially the situation of girls. Um, possible human trafficking and sexual abuses, because that is a very serious situation. And we would like to know if the state is providing a differentiated approach we would like to know if there is a specific monitoring program of the effectiveness of the implementation of those training sessions. Thank you. I would like to give the floor now to Commissioner Hernando, that is a rapporteur of Human Rights Defenders. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, I will be very brief. I won't make more questions than those uh, prepared by my colleagues. I would like to show my solidarity to the female leaders today. They have uh, given their testimony with fear. I would like to show them our solidarity for all the harassment and all the threats that you have suffered. Now we would like to let them know that being here in this hearing uh, is protected is under the Inter-American Standards of the Commission. This is a well-established practice. The state uh, guarantees legal protection for all those people who participate in the hearing and that provide us with information. So regarding this hearing, I'm convinced that your security will be secured. Thank you for cooperating. I also would like to thank the state also for all the information that they have provided us with. They have done this in previous occasions and this shows the solid institutions of the state to face the threats that come from non-state agents, from unlawful groups. We know that. And these hearing help us to see the actions that the state is taking to comply with its duty to protection and due diligence uh, for these communities. I think that it's important to repeat the principles established by the Commission to advance on a comprehensive policy of protection of human rights defenders. We know that the security measures that are granted through the protection unit are an urgent response and, and they are necessary for the effective and immediate protection of human rights defenders. However, it's important that there are other measures in order to solve structural issues. So this is a call and an invitation from the rapporteurship of persons or human rights defenders so that the state advances on protection measures that are more comprehensive, that include the prevention of the real situation, but also the investigation and the sanction of those who commit crimes against human rights defenders. Another important element, and I'm happy that Ambassador Donius mentioned this, is the compliance of the precautionary measures. We have effective precautionary measures uh, for persons in the Bajo Atrato region. This is an instrument of the commission to provide security to people that are at risk. And we believe that the compliance of these measures by the state would guarantee the protection of people at risk, especially when it comes to social leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. I would like to offer the floor to Commissioner Margaret May McCauley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, before I start, can I please um, apologize 
for being so late in joining the meeting, there was a confusion and conflict of time. And I do apologize, but, um, I, but I greet the uh, members of um, civil society um, and, and all who have spoken and uh, the representatives of the state. And I thank you for coming forward to speak with us. Um, before I start, I, I start some questions. I just want to say this, that every single, as the Rapporteur of Afro-Descendants and of the rights of women and against uh, Afro-Descendants against racism, Every single hearing and working meeting, I have to say, representatives of the state, quite humbly, but truthfully, is extremely um, upsetting and runs on the same course. The, the violence which they suffer, the displacements, the violations of their rights, and the rights of women which are which are violated, and some of them listed by my learned sister, um, Ms. Mantilla, um, just go, keeps going on. The invasion of new armed groups in their in their communities, the the breakdown of their families, the the the, the recruitment of of their young adolescents and children. The, the sexual violations, it just goes on and on. And the serious displacements that are still continuing. Every single, every single hearing and event of, and working meeting, it's the same, same thing. I do, I do, and I, I'm aware, listen, and I'm aware of what the state has been doing or one should say attempting to do because it has not succeeded in curbing the violations, the violence inflicted on these communities by these armed groups at all. And so several communities, ethnicities, especially the the black population, the Afro-Colombians and indigenous people and peasants, rural persons are suffering enormously. And it seems as if they're forgotten. Anyway, I now ask my question. Um, in, I'll ask a question, one question first and then go on to the others. What special measures has the and to, to, to the state, but the, the civil society can comment. What special measures has the Colombian state adopted for the protection of black communities, incorporating an ethnic and territorial approach to it? Then my next question is, what impacts what impact? What impacts has COVID-19 had on Afro, Afro descendants specifically, but no, but specifically on women, Afro women and women peasants. And of course, women indigenous persons, specifically the gender of the feminine. And what specific measures has the state taken to guarantee the sexual reproductive health and rights of Afro descendant women, indigenous women and peasant women? I also ask the state what specific measures have has it taken in relation to the economic, social, cult and cultural rights of all Afro-descendant families and men and women, and to ensure that the children of, the, of this group of persons enjoy the same education provided for other ethnic groups in Colombia. 
And I also include uh, in that and specific, specific attention being paid to the female gender of the groups, including indigenous persons. Because I recall a visit uh, I had some years ago, speaking to indigenous women about their children, their concern about their children and the failures in relation to education. I also asked the state to give us information about specific measures taken to protect, to ensure that Afro-descendant leaders participate at all levels of decision-making. In the municipal level, the regional level, and the national state levels in the country. And I also ask one final thing. Could you, if you do not have this information at hand, kindly put it in writing so that we can have the full information which you should present to us today. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. But now I would like to give the floor to the Acting Executive Secretary and then to the Special Rapporteur. Thank you, Madam President. I want to say that the annual report by the Commission, the 2020 report, has a special chapter about the follow-up of recommendations by the Commission and one about the recommendation of the country report for Colombia and chapter two about the process of the states we wanted uh, you to know that this report is available will be available on april 15 and the commission is following up the report on the situation of persons um, uh, defenders and leaders in colombia in a specific and also the commission has just approved a report on the re in study of afro-descendant persons in the region, social, economic, cultural, environmental rights. That is the first one to be of this kind that includes inter-American standards, in particular about exclusion, poverty, and social, economic, cultural, environmental rights. So this becomes a tool available to the Afro-descendants that are leaving the communities and defending their rights, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Secretary, I will now give the floor to the Special Rapporteur. Thank you, Madam President, I will be brief as the, all, as Commissioner McCauley and the Executive Secretary already mentioned some things, I would like to add something about the strategy or Operation Artemisa that was mentioned by the representative of the state, it could be interesting to know if there's a, a research about the impact of this operation and which, as the goal is to end deforestation in Colombia. I would like to know if you have further information about the implementation of this operation. And I would like to listen to the civil society in regard to this as well, thank you. Thank you, Rapporteur. I will now give the floor to the civil society. You have 12 minutes. If there is information that you are not able to share right now, you can send it later. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. We agree the Colombian state is willing to fulfill the um, commitments in connection with precautionary measures and human rights. We have to remember, Mr. Ambassador, that on the last meeting, working meeting, the government was committed 
to provide an answer to all these protection issues um, in connection with the protection of leaders, affirming that before the next period of sessions, they would have an answer and a solution to all the problem. However, as the victims in the territories tell, there, have, there hasn't been a response. The verbal commitment did not turn into a reality. This includes several questions for the state and for the persons who live in the territories. What are the results of the operations that are effective and concrete in terms of dismantling criminal structures? How is it possible that um, after January, a person had been deprived of liberty, a member of the indigenous guard had been deprived of li um, his liberty and he spent three months, three minutes away from the police and two minutes away from the military. How is it possible for him to be deprived, separated from his partner, and he was taken for six hours. The police and the military units in the area have nothing to do with that, didn't do anything about it. How is it possible that there are police or military units with the structures of the AGC, we are not, we are saying what we see, what the communities live and see on a daily basis. 200 armed men went into a territory after um, going through a blockade, they were uh, armed and the military forces did not detect them. How is that possible? It's been 12 days, 70 men from the AGC and there has, hasn't been a participation from the military forces. The military forces stopped different members, established a dialogue with them, ask them why they were part of an organization. These are persons that were members of the FARC. They are part of this armed organization. They have the support of the military forces that support the, the interests of the business sector. The Environmental Indigenous Guard has no jurisdiction on the on all persons, but that truth that has been told cannot be taken to uh, justice. The public force cannot take a car and drive for 20 minutes to capture them, but the Attorney General did not go and capture them and take their testimonies and start an investigation. That shows that there's a lack of capacity from the state to act with due diligence. In connection to these operations carried out by the public forces is that on March 25th, a news um, a TV show showed documents about the Operation Baston. Several uh, journalists and human rights defenders were uh, shown, and a well known journalist is showing how collective territories of Bajo are being used to transport 
cocaine and in a counterintelligence investigation, they showed the participation of high officials of the military forces. The judicial branch should provide an answer for the violation of the rights as populations have not been able to use their territories. The fact that there are air steps for the transport of cocaine, the participation of um, active members of public forces, we ask ourselves what a specific action with re good results, effective results is being developed. How can companies be used as a facade to transport cocaine to Europe and the US? This occurs in the places where communities cannot get. The territories have been um, taken. They have been denied to the citizens and they have been um, obliged to deforestate the sector, the region. The families are being displaced. There's a paramilitary a member that falls in love with a member of the organization, the members and relatives of uh, have to leave the regions because maybe they fall in love with the girls and with the women of the communities. So they have been collective displacements of the indigenous peoples living in the riverside that have denied have refused to be subjected to this criminal organization. They operate amidst the inefficiency, incapacity of the effective um, work carried out by public forces. So the intervention plan has specific elements, judicial investigation of what is going on. This has been occurring for 24 years due to the peace agreements, new strategies were developed and they are being subject to illegal and illegal agribusiness uh, projects. The communities have to leave the territories and be silent. When they get to the territory, I hope I'm wrong, There's no one measure. We need to question all this. There's no uh, public policy to protect the life and freedom. We are talking about permanent operations of an armed structure in the Bajo Atrato. Cañando. Mancilla comunidad, communities that are part, that are suffering this. It's absurd that this is occurring under a rule of law. This is a very serious situation. And when we talk about a comprehensive plan, we're not talking just about public force. It is necessary to analyze internally what is going wrong with these operations. At the same time, the presence of the Ministry of Health, the Environment, Ministry of Environment have to take action. And how is it possible that in four years they have deforestated so much forest without the intervention of the Ministry of Environment? We have filed the complaints in a permanent way, that situation. How is it possible? that the person filing the complaint has to leave the territory. How is it possible that the Ministry of the Interior, as it has been said, develops, carries out meetings and that these actions are occurring at the same time the meetings are being held? How is it possible that there are agreements with the institutions to finance agribusiness and the forest stations against the black and indigenous communities. It is outrageous. That's why the intervention plan 
requires the comprehension of the rights of Black, Indigenous, and peasants communities. Who has made the voluntary substitution Indigenous communities? Their reaction is members of the public forces say, don't do it, don't do it. Let's talk to them. With whom? With the legal ones, with the drug dealers that have uh, developed um, cocaine labs in the territories of the communities against their wills. They are subject to displacements. This is the seriousness of the situation. A plan of action needs to face these new mechanisms that are developing and criminal, uh, criminal activities that is being developed due to the incapacity and the omission of the state and the um, Office of the Prosecutor General's incapacity to act. Several witnesses have not been taken into account Several companies from the business sector are um, partnered with the drug traffic in the region. People have been excluded. Unfortunately, the commission to um, clarify the truth through amidst the pandemic, they went to the territories and they reported the serious situations these communities are going through. There's a lot of information the government knows and also the development of this uh, intervention plan is necessary. I will now give the floor to the state. They will have 13 minutes and a half. We cannot hear you. Is your microphone on? We cannot hear you. I have a question, Madam Commissioner. Could you open the microphone to Siervo Roa? He is as a panelist. I don't know how that works. Please, let's try to do that. Sorry, we cannot open the microphone to those persons that do not appear as panelists. He should leave the event and join once again as a panelist in order to enable uh, the microphone so that he can speak. But in order to participate as a panelist, he needs a special link, right? We are sending the link to see if he can join the meeting as a panelist. So while he is getting connected, I will now give the floor to the state so you can reply. And we will restart the timer. You have 30 minutes and a half. de la plataforma. Micrófono conectando al computador, ¿se puede? No. 
No. No se escucha, lamentablemente. Le, 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 le daría, por favor, la palabra nos, a otra persona en la presentación del Estado para que podamos avanzar en esta audiencia, porque después tenemos otra más. Avance eh, on this here, and because we have another. Y ahora, uff. Yeah. <laughs> Entonces le doy la palabra al... A, so al... now I will give the floor to the state and... Please, Mirta, leave the meeting and come back again because we are running out of time. So I would request representatives of the state and we will give the floor to representatives day, uh, the representatives of the state and we will continue. Commissioner, I would talk while we wait for the ambassador to be able to talk. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, ambassador. Sorry for uh, the technical issue. First, especially greet the representatives of the civil society that are here today with us, also to my colleagues, and also to social leaders that they have expressed their concerns and their questions in this hearing. I would like to let them know that, and to show our solidarity, the state of Colombia does not deny the difficult situation that you are living in some regions of the national territory. I think that it's always important to mention the context. Today, petitioners mentioned the problem of drug trafficking, of unlawful armed groups, and the problems that the nation is facing in some areas of the territory. And this has to do with criminal groups that are there, especially in the borders, especially in the border with our sister Republic of Venezuela. Uh, it is true because we know that there are a lot of fightings and conflicts between the groups because they want to control drug trafficking and the mining sector. And we know that there are a lot of acts of violence that affect the civilians. The state does not deny these facts, we acknowledge them. In 2020, the levels of violence were higher than in the previous 46 years. So, but the, sorry, the other way around, the levels of violence are the lowest in 46 years. We acknowledge the problem that you have because of the actions of these criminal groups. The state of Colombia is making a great effort this, that is a territory that covers over 2 million square kilometers. We need to respond. We are developing public policies that will lead to the dismantling of these criminal groups, especially. And also, it will promote development conditions that guarantee the well being of the all Colombian citizens there. We have heard many uh, statements regarding facts and situations, and I would like to thank uh, civil society organizations to send this information in written, the statistics, the figures, so we can provide an answer for each of the allegations 
There are several statements, but we don't have figures, we don't have data, we don't have statistics, we don't have names. And it's okay because of the nature of this hearing. But we know that the persons that are here decided not to show their names and we understand their situation, but the state needs that these complaints are formally submitted so that the state can address each of the issues and can provide a satisfactory response. We would like to repeat our solidarity uh, with the people that live in that area where there are recurrent acts of violence. We know, we know that this is a fact. And I would like to conclude because I heard many statements in today's hearing. We have the hearings, uh, we have the statements of the petitioners and we all believe that they are true. We uh, show our solidarity and so on. But when the state intervenes, we are providing serious information. Colombia is a serious state. We have institutions that are solid. We have a judicial system that is working. We have a public prosecutor office that has presented very relevant results in recent months. And therefore, we want the information we provide to be received and that it is given the same treatment that, this, that the information or the complaints presented by the civil society organizations. We accept your complaints. We will give a response after we have information in written but we should also pay attention to the information provided by the state because otherwise we won't be able to reach a solution and won't be able, able to uh, have the outcomes that we expect. We need to listen to both parties. Sometimes everybody thinks that the petitioners and the state are at the ends at the different ends of the opposite ends of a single situation, but this is not the case. A stability of the nation is a question that involves us all, petitioners and the state. We will be waiting for that written information that includes facts, figures, threats, in order to provide a timely response to those complaints. Thank you very much, commissioners. The state still uh, has time. I don't know if anybody would like to take the floor. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Colonel Puentes is present, has joined the meeting, so he can present now. Good afternoon to all those present in this hearing. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. I would like to greet all the participants. My name is Kenel Puentes. I'm part of the police station here in the region. And I have the jurisdiction for the municipalities of Antokia and Choco. Uh, we, I would like to talk about the results uh, achieved by the public sources together with the military forces. We have, uh, we would like to talk about the AGCs in the actions that we have developed. I would like to say that we have a strategy that is the Agamemnon II operation. The operation is led by a high officer of the national police together with members for, from the national army. And we are trying to deal with this specific armed group. 
we have done several actions and among those i would like to mention the following first in august 2020 we were able to detain one of the leaders of the structure, Carlos Vasquez. And he belonged to an operation that is called Alias Pueblo. Second, we detain or we killed, that is to, we killed in February the second leader of this armed group that is called Alias Marihuana. That operation was conducted by the section of Rio Sucio Chocó near to the Bajo Atrato region. These actions have been vital to dismantle this armed group. And regarding operational results, we have been tackling the threats We are trying to stop the activities or the legal activities, and we have been able to seize nine tons of cocaine. And those that cocaine was uh, to be sent to a foreign countries. So we blockage the ports and the roads, uh, they account for over $1 billion. So we've been also been able to seize cigarettes accounting for over $800,000. We have also been able to seize and to uh, close 10 illegal labs. We destroy those lives, labs. In January 29, we seized 1,800 kilograms of cocaine, also over 400 kilograms of solid waste and another 400 kilograms of liquid waste. And this uh, represents four tons of production of cocaine. Those are the biggest actions that we have taken against this armed group. And we are doing this together with the national police, the national army. We are committed to fight against these criminals and we are here to protect civilians and Colombians and all the inhabitants of the region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam President, thank you. I would like to thank all those who participated in this hearing today. Especially, I would like to thank and to show our solidarity to those who uh, presented their testimonies, especially the female leaders. We would like to thank the state for the information. And I would like to insist about the mandate of the commission. We would like to cooperate with the state and with civil society organizations and with the victims, especially in these complex situations and contexts. We know that people are in a threatening situation. We are here to promote dialogue, dialogue to get uh, the parties closer. We will visit the country when uh, the pandemic allows us to do it. So we are at your disposal. There will be differences between the government with the civil society, but we are here to collaborate with you in order to guarantee the integrity and the human rights of all persons. And what we listen to today leaves us with a lot of concern, especially the situation of the female leaders.
the state and the commission is very concerned. And we would like to repeat what Commissioner Hernandez said. I would like to mention what the Article 63 of the Rules of Procedure of the Commission says, the state needs to offer the protection to all the people that attend to a hearing and that provide evidence of any type. That a state cannot uh, start a trial against the experts and to the persons that participate in the hearing. So we call upon the state to take the measures, measures to, to guarantee the protection. And I would like to second the words of Mrs. Mersa. We would like to uh, send the state the details and the information regarding those peoples and communities that are suffering this risk situation so that you are able to protect the victims. And we will be promoting dialogue between the parties. Thank you very much. And a special greet or a special hug to the victims. Thank you very much. Goodbye.